Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be looking at structures, and it's a continuation from the last video about rail lists. If you haven't seen it, please click the banner above and check it out. If you're comfortable with the rail lists, then we can proceed. So today we'll be looking at structures, and structures are really helpful when you want to store multiple variables and you want to group them all in one central area. So what I mean by this is, we could have an endless amount of information about a person, like their age, their name, their birthday, where they live, and so on and so forth. And you don't want to be creating a separate list array for every single person. Like here, it gets a little bit long, so we can create a name, and we can give them an age. But then when we go to print them, we just get a list of names and a list of ages. And then we have to keep remembering that this position needs to be accessed the same as this position. And then what happens if you accidentally add the person's age first, and you add the other person's age second, then now names zero has ages one, and names one has ages zero. And this is gonna be problematic. So the solution to this is to use something called structures. And structures allow you to group up multiple variables and keep them under one name. So we can start making a structure by just outside the main function, we can type public struct. And then we can give it a name. So all of our names and ages and addresses and things like that can be wrapped under one name called person. And we can just create this name and you can call it whatever you want. And inside of here, we want them to have a name and to have them an age. So we can type public string name and public int age. So now we're giving this person a name and an age. Perfect. So now we want to make use of the structure. So now that we've created a person, in essence, what we've created is a type that we can use, like the list of strings is a type, list of int is a type, an int is a type, a string is a type, but what we've now created is this person type, and it's called a structure. So we can declare this by typing person, and we can just say person, and then we need to, just as we do with the array list, we need to make a new instance of person. Perfect. So now what we have is we have a new variable that's instantiated using the structure that we've just created, and then when you do the dot notation, we have access to name and age. So we can type person dot, and we can see name inside here. We need to give it nothing and person dot age, and we can give it a value. So now we have created this new type that lets us store their name and their age. So let's try and construct a program that can make use of this. So instead of having multiple different variables for their names, their ages, we could just have an array of persons. So now instead of having list of strings and list of integers, we could just have a list of persons. And we can just say people equals new list person. So now what we've done is instead of having lots and lots of names and lots of lots of ages, we just have lots and lots of people, which is a lot better because say if we wanted to add something else into here, like their fave number, so if you wanted to add their favorite number, you don't have to create a whole nother list just to create their favorite number. You just simply add another variable up here and it'll get added to the person structure. So now let's try and refactor this example to be able to use it for our persons. So we just use this as an example, so let's remove this. We don't need our list of names, ages, and favorite number anymore. We can get rid of them. And all we need to do is make a person. So now, instead of having these, what we can have is some outputs. Console write, please enter your name. And then we can have a string name, console.readline. And then that's, that's for their name. And then we can have a console write again, and we can say, please enter your age. And we can just have it int it equals convert to in32 and we, it'll take the console read line inside them. Perfect. And now we don't need the four each's because we're using the names and the variable ages with them. So now we have two variables set up, a string name and a string age. Now we need to actually make use of them with the people. So we can make a new line here and we can say person person equals new person and the person.name equals name, and the person.age equals age. So now we've created a new person, 
We've set their name to the name that we get passed in from the console, and set their age to the age that we get passed in from the console, and now we actually need to just add it to the list. People dot add, and we can add our person. Perfect. So now we could do a for each for item in people. Now we could do a console right line and just say item dot name and plus item dot it. So now if we run the program, enter your name other, enter your age twenty three, and now we get it like this. And now we can access each person in one singular variable using the dot notation to grab the different properties. And now if we did want to add the favorite number, this green underline is just telling us that we're never really using it. So then we can add another line in here, present to your favorite number. Well, and we can just add it in here as well. Number. And then we can also just add it onto the print. And if we run that again, Abba 2340. And now we can see it like this. And if you wanted to store multiple people in this program, then you could actually wrap this around in a for loop. So we can say int i equals zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. Open, this, open the curly braces and actually put all of this code inside here. So now we can end, output the name, read it in, get their age, get their number, and we can add the person. Now if we run this, we can see that it'll come up several times. And then now we can see all the results being shown, which is perfect. So now we can store as many people as we want because we have an array list and that lets us do as many as we please. So we don't have to specifically say how many people we want to save. We just say we want to save some people and then we can make a for loop to ask the user how many people they want to save. To make this code slightly better, you can add a constructor to the structure. So what I mean by this is, in this example here, we're creating a new person, then assigning their name, then assigning their age, then assigning the favorite number, and finally we assign the person inside here. It would be so much better if we could just use this constructor to add these variables as parameters inside here. And we can, so just above the variables, you wanna write public and then the name of the structure. So in my case it's person, we can open the brackets, close the brackets for now, and open the curly braces and just make sure that this works fine. So this is telling you that you need to include age, name, age, and favorite number inside the constructor, which we're about to do. So we can just follow the same patterns here, string name, int age, int fav number. And now inside of the constructor, type this.name equals name, dot age equals age, this.fav number equals fav number. And what you realize is the error is now gone. So this is representative of the object that you're currently inside. And since we're inside person, this refers to person. So this.name refers to this name right here. Name refers to this parameter. This.age is this one. And the age is the parameter. This.favorite number is this number. And the fav is the parameter. So all this constructor does is it takes in the things that you pass in the code and it will store them into these variables, which means that now our code can look a lot better. So we can remove all of these lines. And when we go to add the person, we can say we want to add a new person, open the brackets, and now it says one of two. And if we press down arrow key on our keyboard, we can see that there's two constructors available. The default one that we just used and the one that we just created. So it's expecting a string name, string age, and a favorite number, which is perfect because these are the variables that we've just set up. So we can just type in age number and then close the second brackets. And that's pretty much it. So now we're saying we're going to have our string name, our int age, our int number, and then we're going to call the constructor for person and pass all three variables. And this just prevents us from making a whole new variable and then doing the dot notation for each independent property. We can just have it all in one constructor. Plus it makes the code look a lot neater. So if we just make the list smaller and just run this again. There we go. So now we can see all of our results printed out perfectly. So this is how to use structures. Just a quick rundown, we made a public struct and called it person. We added a constructor that involved all of our fields, just so when we create our person, we have all the fields stored. We store them using the dot notation, and then we have our strings here.
in our main we just create a list of persons and then we loop around three times to ask the user about their name, their age, their favorite number and then when we go to add it to the people's list we construct a new person and then add their age and then add their name, their age and their number and then once the for loop is finished there is a for each loop that goes around all of the people grabs the items and just prints them out to the screen. Hope that all made sense, if you have any questions please put them in the comments, otherwise I'll see you in the next one, please like and subscribe.